Hey guys, I'm back. Um, today we're going to start our first official system. That's going to be the integumentary system. Uh, your integumentary system is mostly going to be your skin. Um, so today we're going to start video lesson one, and it's going to be basically just covering the introductory material over this new system. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, anatomy students, here we go. We're going to start with our first official body system, and this is going to be the integumentary system. So for today's video lesson, we're just going to cover uh, the basic introductory material for this system. So let's go ahead and get started. The organs of the integumentary system include the skin and its accessory structures. And accessory structures of the skin are going to be hair, nails, and glands. Also, you're going to find embedded within the skin uh, a lot of blood vessels and uh, nerve endings, which are going to contain individual corpuscles for various forms of stimuli, such as touch and pain and temperature and pressure. Uh, and you also find uh, some very small muscles embedded within the skin. So because this is a system, that means it's going to be made up of different organs and those organs will be made up of the different tissues. And we've just come off the tissues unit. So all of that should be fresh in our mind. So that means that all four of the basic tissue types are well represented in the organ system. This is again, our first system, the uh, epithelium, is going to have is going to have hair nails uh, and the epidermis the outer layer of your skin there'll be epithelial tissue the dermis is going to contain connective tissue there will be muscle found uh, in the dermis as well attached to the hair follicles and in the uh, arteries and veins you will also find smooth muscle especially in the veins and there you'll find nervous tissue will be in abundance for the different touch receptors and uh, the free nerve endings and the, the different corpuscles for, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for temperature change and for pressure and pain sensors and so on and so forth. The integument is an organ system comprised of many organs, such as hair and multiple types of glands. So remember, in our structural level of organization, cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up organ systems, and your integumentary system is made up of uh, different organs. The integument can also be thought of as a cutaneous membrane that covers the outer surface of the body. So except for the uh, openings and you know, the, uh, your eyeballs, uh, the openings in your face, you're pretty much covered by your integument. It is the largest organ by surface area and weight. This area is about two square meters. So for those of you who are familiar with the metric system, if you are not, uh, the English is going to be about 22 square feet. Your skin is going to weigh anywhere between four and a half to five kilograms in the metric system. And of course, in the English system, that's going to be about 10 or 11 pounds. Now, obviously, uh, this is an average. You know, if we take the skin of someone who is... Um, uh, four foot nine and weighs 87 pounds um, and you compare it to uh, an NFL lineman at six seven three thirty um, probably the skin of that NFL lineman uh, is going to be uh, a lot heavier than uh, the uh, four foot nine gymnast uh, who comes in at, at 90 pounds you know so this is again the law of averages. But for most people, it's going to make up about 16% of your total body weight. Depending on the area of skin we're talking about, it's anywhere from a half a millimeter to four millimeters thick. Uh, a millimeter is not very thick. 
Um, we're talking, you'd look at your uh, vocab cards, probably about three or four vocab cards is going to be uh, roughly the same width as a uh, the thickness. If you stack them up and measure the how tall, about four, maybe five uh, index cards would be, that's going to be about one millimeter. So you figure three, two, three index cards is going to be half a millimeter. So that skin is not very thick. But there are other areas where you get up to four millimeters, and that's going to be your high traffic, your high friction areas. For example, your eyelids, that that skin is not very thick, but the skin on your heels, much thicker. Now, if you watch the Swiffer commercials, you learn that uh, most of the dust in your home is made up of dead human skin cells. We lose about a kilogram of skin. That's going to be about two, 2.2 pounds of skin uh, epithelium every year. And this makes up most of the dust that's in our house. Uh, every time something brushes up against you, you lose those dead skin cells. So what does the skin do for you other than protection, which is pretty obvious? It also helps you regulate body temperature, not only by uh, the fat that is in the subcutaneous layer uh, insulating you, but the blood vessels in your skin will dilate when you want to cool, let the blood get close to the surface of the skin, try to radiate heat. They will also constrict when you're cold and it will keep blood from going to the surface in, in an attempt to keep us warm. Uh, the sensors in your skin allow us the perception of touch. Uh, also, temperature changes. We can tell when something's cold. We can feel when something's hot. Uh, there are pain sensors to let you know, uh, hey, that hurts. Move your body away from whatever's causing that pain. And exposure to sunlight, UV radiation, will allow us to synthesize vitamin D with our skin. And it will, in many instances, will let people know emotional expression. Um, for example, uh, not only by facial expression, but just when someone blushes, you, you can... Uh, determine all oh, they're embarrassed or they're excited. Uh, it also serves as an important reservoir of blood. You know, coming in at 22 square feet, you think of all the blood vessels that are going to be in your skin. Uh, there's going to be a lot of blood stored in there. There are three major layers to your skin. The outer thinner layer is called the epidermis. This is the uh, part of the skin that when you look at someone and you see them, you see their skin, you're looking at their epidermis. You know, the running joke is, hey, your epidermis is showing. And it is made up of epithelial tissue. The inner thicker layer right underneath the epidermis is the dermis. So if we go back to unit one and we start talking about uh, prefixes, the prefix epi means upon, uh, sometimes above, but it usually means upon. So epidermis is the layer of skin that is upon the dermis. So the dermis is going to be underneath or below the epidermis. The subcutaneous layer is going to be uh, also sometimes called the hypodermis. Hypo is going to be uh, below so hypodermis is the layer below the dermis, uh, sometimes again referred to as the subcutaneous layer. Uh, that is the third and deepest layer of your skin. The way I try to help people remember that the hypodermis is under the skin, uh, I have them think of a hypodermic needle, which is used to inject medication under the skin. So hypo means below or under and epi means upon. The subcutaneous layer is made up of loose areolar tissue. Also, there'll be a mixture of adipose tissue, connective tissue in there that attaches the skin to the underlying tissues and organs, it holds the skin down to uh, mostly muscle. That's mostly what skin is attached to is the underlying muscle. 
This is a diagram that we're going to see quite a bit. I call this uh, the cube o skin. Um, now there is one little thing that I will point out later. Technically, this cube of skin is not anatomically correct, but this is a layer of skin that uh, contains everything that we will study in the skin. I won't get into the anatomical correctness right now, but we will at one point. So we see everything from uh, the adipose tissue, the fat, the blood vessels. We see sweat glands. Um, we see uh, oil glands. So here we have sweat glands. These are different kinds of sweat glands. Uh, we see the oil glands over there that secrete the sebum or the oil uh, into the hair follicle. We got one right there, hair follicle there. Uh, we see the layer of the epidermis and how they uh, puzzle piece fit together with the projections of the dermis. We see that this whole layer is epidermis. This whole layer is dermis and everything down below this is all hypodermis or subcutaneous layer. Um, and then I have a handout for you to actually label a lot of these yourself. And that gives you a paper copy um, because you will see this diagram again um, on an assessment kind of uh, application. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So be ready for that. Continuing on. A dermatologist, as we've mentioned before, uh, when we talked about uh, in the intro unit and terms and their meaning, when we say derm, we mean skin. A dermatologist is a physician who treats disorders of the skin. So here are some examples. These are burns. Uh, burns are in three different degrees, first, second, and third degree burns. We'll talk more in detail about the burns. Uh, and how they are distinguished apart. But basically, uh, your first degree burn uh, is just, it's, it's not considered a full thickness burn because it only affects the epidermis. Usually it just has some redness and swelling and some pain. A second degree burn goes is also uh, not considered a full thickness burn because it only affects through the dermis and it typically is associated with blisters. So if you ever had a burn that blisters, that's a second degree burn. And a third degree burn is a full thickness burn because it burns all the way down through the skin and down into the uh, subcutaneous or hypodermis. And typically the tissue is destroyed. And you can see here, this is, uh, that is a definite sign that blackened, charred uh, tissue that has been destroyed, that is a third degree burn, okay? So uh, this is going to be uh, our stopping point for video lesson one. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, that's it. That uh, gets us through the very beginnings of your integumentary system. So um, at this point, if you are on home quarantine, that should catch you up with um, the first two days of notes if we're here at school um, and you just wanted to hear those notes again, that's why we do them. As always, thanks for watching. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later.